Mobo Lowdown in Lockdown, we are back. We just spoke to Shabo. She was our first guest for this Friday. Hope everyone's doing well. Gonna wait for everyone to start coming back in. Then I'm gonna invite Mike. Mike Boateng, Mr. Michael from Love Island. There's a lot we need to talk about as well, man. I hope everyone's doing well. How is your Friday going? Okay, I can see Mike here. Let me see, let me see. Where's he gone? Let me put my comment in. And then we go from there. Hope everyone's feeling blessed though. Shabo was sick. Such good insight, man. Super excited to see what she does next. What did you guys think? Let me know what you think. Just gotta pin this comment. And we are good to go. Mike, I'm looking for you. Let me see. Oh, why is it not letting me? I think my phone's even frozen. Where is he? Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. How's everyone doing though? Drop your emojis. Let me know how you're feeling. Mike from Love Island is going to be here real, real soon. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, what's happening, man? How are I'm, you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm blessed, bro. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. First of all, what's Priscilla done to you? Why have you been upset today? I, like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to hot her up right now. Isn't it? She's okay. in trouble. Let's, she's in trouble. Isn't she's, it? In trouble. She's, in trouble. <laughs> she's in trouble. She's in trouble. How you been, man? How you been? I've been good. I've been good. Just chilling. Lockdown. Obviously, getting ready to come out of lockdown now. So just planning mm -hmm. a few things and then, yeah, man. How's the lockdown period been like? How's it been for you? Obviously, unprecedented for everyone. We never knew yeah. what it was gonna be like. But what's yeah. it been like for you? How? Where have you been at? For me personally, do you know what? It's been it's been no different to how the year started. I was I was in lockdown technically. <laughs> in, in the villa innit? and then I came out and then we're still stuck inside so it's been refreshing just to yeah. kind of have that time to really really plan stuff for the next half of the year yeah so it's been alright that's a good space to start actually Love mm. Island one of the most popular shows in the UK everyone tunes in you find yourself on Love Island and I know your story to get in was a little bit crazy what was that process? Oh, boy, it was mad because, um, obviously, I initially, I was never even going to apply for Love Island. There was a friend mm -hmm. of mine that was in the process, and she she had gotten quite far, and I think she basically was like, oh, I think you should do this as well. And I was like, no. <laughs> but then she sent, she sent me the application anyway, and then she's like, yeah, just do it. You've got nothing to lose. And in the end, I was thinking, do you know what? Around that time, I was going through a lot in my workplace. I was working mm -hmm. in the police, so I was going through a lot. And I just thought, why not? Let me just try it. And then, thank God. <laughs> yeah. got yeah, so was it, was, it was a bit of a fast track, in it, from what I've heard. In yeah, terms of so, how your interviews and stuff went. Yeah, yeah. The normal, I mean, the normal process is like you do your first interview, and then you go on to meet the. Um, you come back again for like a recall, and then you meet the casting directors, and then you meet the execs, and then they kind of give you the heads up. But I was lucky; they kind of did everything in one day, and then okay. they basically just yeah told me in that first day that like, yeah <laughs> i was in oh, wait how many people did you tell before that like how many people knew you was going for the interview uh not a lot i, I told my brothers yeah and, and my my close boys and then that was it that, so mum and dad now nah 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 nah, 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 didn't nah, tell nah. Them. my mum my mum that's a different story i have to tell her till late because it? it could have got techie if i was too early <laughs> so what was their reaction then what was their family's reaction Mom, everyone's reaction was cool. My sisters and my mom, they hated it. They were like, ah, you're going on Love Island to disgrace me. <laughs> and then I had to have meetings upon meetings upon meetings yeah. with my mom. Like, I can't even call them conversations. They were full of me. It's made me wear suit and tie. Suit and tie to the living room. Come and sit down and show me. <laughs> so I was mad. But I, mean, I got through to her in the end. I got through to her. Yeah. So you got sisters as well. I know you've got brothers. What, how many siblings do you have? So I've got two two brothers and I've got my older sister and my younger sister. Oh, okay. So a big family. Yeah, yeah, big, big family. Big family. Were you worried about anything before going in to the villa? You know Did what? You ever think like that? Yeah, was you were you worried about anything? Yeah. <laughs> I was, you know, Black Twitter it can be a scary place. It can be a scary place. <laughs> Black Twitter can be a scary place at times. <laughs> and obviously, I knew coming in as well. Like, if you don't get it right for the for the people. 
it's, yeah. it's going to be long, isn't it? And obviously, I'm a police officer as well, so naturally, there was going to be bare people that hated me regardless, just yeah. for the fact that I was a fed. And then on top of it, like, you're coming to represent. So it was like, oof. The officer stepped against you, where police officer yeah. going into Love Island and backs <laughs> it up. It's hard. It's mad, it's mad, it's yeah. mad. And from the, from the sounds of it, I got, I got quite a lot of, quite a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I got quite a lot of the stickers also, but <laughs> luckily I came through all right, so. so yeah, I think you won a lot of people around, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you a lot of people around. And in terms of being inside, do you ever feel like fear being the sort of token black guy sort of thing? Um, I, I, mean, I, did, like I did fear it at first, but then I realised, like, low-key, the diversity on, on my season was pretty good. Okay. And also, my character as well, I could never accept to be that type of person. Yeah. So when I was in the villa, um, obviously not to kind of big myself up, but in terms of characters, I was quite a presence anyway. Yeah. So, when it came to like challenges and talking and people getting around each other, my voice was always hurt. So uh, yeah. I, there was no way I was ever going to be this. You the, didn't the fear like that. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you learn then, even on a personal one, just like you as a person in your heart and in your mind, what do you learn from an experience like Love Island? Because like, to us, it's just entertainment, isn't it? But you're actually there for longer than one hour in the day when we watch you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? What do you, mm. what's the process? What's your journey? The whole it's, it's mad like i i honestly learned how to interact with complete strangers on like a day-to-day -day basis and just yeah. understand different people's characters because literally that's what they were to me when we first came in everybody was strangers and i was like getting used to how they are and how different people interact and what to say to people and what not to say to people and at first it was kind of hard but then eventually i was kind of getting the hang of it and realizing yeah. certain people's characters and how to speak to them so that, that was a big one for me i'm sorry yeah. one second. i'm gonna i'm gonna close my door no you're right you're right <laughs> there's other conversations happening yeah <laughs> it's all good, it's good ah. yeah now that's interesting you mentioned though because i know obviously you moved around when you were younger as well yeah so, like you've experienced lots of different places around the uk so yeah. did you feel do you feel that put you in better stead to do the Love Island process or was Love Island just completely I, I, think, I think so I think so in terms of like in terms of like integrating I think my experience has definitely helped because obviously I grew up in London then I went to Manchester and then I was in Ireland for a bit and then I lived in Sheffield for four years so I'm, I've been like used to always having to mingle with different types of people so, so yeah I'd say my, my upbringing definitely had a big effect on me yeah, on me. On you mentioned um, diversity as well. On the black women sort of side of things, do you think they still got further to go with diversity there? Yeah, yeah, a lot further to go because it, it, it seems like every year there's only one black girl. One. Yeah. And then I think this year, obviously, I think there was only two because they had yeah. Leanne and then they had Chris and then that was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's like they, they're getting better slowly but surely, but obviously we, we want to see more in it. So. Yeah, no, facts, facts, facts. I hear you. What would you say was the best moments? So give me a few, and then the lowest moments for you. Uh, so the, the, I'll start with the lowest moments. So the yeah. lowest, <laughs> just so I can end on a high. But the lowest moment, and honestly, a tough, a tough decision for me was when I had to pick between Leanne and Sophie. Mm -hmm. Because when I was stood there, obviously, you lot see what you see on TV, but up until that moment, there was a lot that was going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Villa. So it was like, in my head, and I'll be real, there was a there was a point where even producers were coming up to me because they weren't quite sure who I was going to pick. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was very close to keeping the end only because I felt like as time was going on, there was a part of me that was thinking, has she really had a chance to kind of find someone else as well? Mm -hmm. And obviously, I, th I thank God, I thank God that I picked Sophie. <laughs> because now that man's come out and seen what she was saying, yeah. I'm happy in it. I'm happy. In it. <laughs> but obviously that was my that was my mindset at the time, thinking, yeah. bruh, like this girl's like she's not really had that chance. And you have to like you have to bear in mind everything that you guys saw that she was saying, I never saw that. So to me, I never saw yeah. none of that. So to me, of face value, Leanne was calm. She didn't mm -hmm. give me no issues, she didn't give me no problems. So I was like, 
should I, should I not? But then in the end, I was thinking, it doesn't really make sense. So I just think okay. so. Yeah. All right. So that was the that was the lowest. Would you say that was the lowest? Yeah, that, that was the lowest point because yeah. after that, after that, it was like integrating and talking to people was mad. Like I was. Yeah. I was on my own for a lot of moments. There was a lot of periods where I was just on my own. Like Even the next day, obviously, they the way they filmed it, they made it seem like the next day, man was just up and active. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. That's the, I, it took about two days for me to even talk to anybody. Okay. So, yeah, so it took me a while to get going again. But then after that, it was all right. And that's cool. If you guys hear a buzzing in the video, my mum's blending tomatoes downstairs, so please allow it, yeah. <laughs> I can hear the blending. <laughs> I'm sure it's the lot will be sweet, though. <laughs> hey, that's right. All right, so best moments, then? Best, My best moment has to be my my date with Priscilla in the safari. I feel like that was, like, just a once-in-a-lifetime thing where but I, I actually genuinely will never forget that moment. Yeah. But little disclaimer, Yeah. I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't actually meant to ask Priscilla out on that day. Okay. I wasn't actually planning to do it there, but I feel like because they had really gone yeah, in. Yeah, you got lost <laughs> in the <laughs> They had really gone in and they bust yeah. us because we came back to the villa and everybody else was telling us about their dates and I'm hearing man them were on rowing boats. Yeah. And then other people are there doing up picnic and I was thinking, wow, so we really actually got bust. Yeah. So, like, in the moment... Had a few people in my ear like I think I think you should ask her out. Right <laughs> I think you should ask her out right now, Mike. Like, so <laughs> it was one of them ones, and yeah, I, I ended up asking her, but I don't regret it. It was it was uh, that was the, my highest point. Okay, we're going to talk about Miss Priscilla very soon. But you mentioned life before the villa, so I never knew you went straight from the police force into Love Island, and like your whole journey in the police force from the news that came out. It just seems very crazy. Do you know what I mean? How long were you a part of the police? What was yeah. the thoughts behind joining the police? And then we'll talk about the different sort of stuff that went, that happened. Yeah, so so even joining the police, it was a it was a mad story because it was like I was I kind of finished playing football, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, and all I knew is that I needed to find something where I felt like I was making a difference, where I could actually feel accomplished going to work and yeah. coming home. If I'm going to do this nine to five thing, I want to do something that I feel like I'm going to feel accomplished in. So I spoke mm -hmm. to my boys and they were just like, oh, maybe you should like go back to university and do something. And university was never for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I looked at the police and they had came, they funny enough, they came to my church the week before I decided to join. Okay. And they were just like promoting, um, promoting more black officers, more Asian officers. And I'm like, yeah, that's, it sounds like an all right thing. So the reason behind me joining was basically, I was thinking there's no there's no black guys. When I look at the police force, I don't see black people policing my area. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ooh. When you see a brother in uniform, you know that he's going to come to you on the level. Or you like to think that he's going to come to you on the level kind of thing. And mm -hmm. we never really saw that. So I'm thinking, okay, if I can join, then maybe someone else can join. And another guy, and then maybe it can kind of turn into a thing. But so, so yeah, that was pretty much the reason why I joined. The, but the reason behind, I got, yeah. I got, I got a lot of stick from my family. I got a lot of stick from my boys. Everybody was basically telling me not to do it. My mum was. Yeah. What did mum say? Yeah, what did mum say? Was she more against the police or Love Island? She was, you know, she was against Love Island, but the police one, it was different because this one, she was like, ah, I have five children and you want to go and kill me. You want to come and. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a death sentence. She, she yeah. said, she's like, no, 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 no. These people, they're going to kill you. If you join, yeah. you don't know anything can happen. I was yeah. like, um, you have to see the vision. Mm. So, yeah, <laughs> that was pretty much it. Okay, so that's how you decide to join. And even the stories that I've heard from when you was inside, I just yeah. can't comprehend in a sense. Because like, the police are there to protect the public. So, if you're going through. These are, I think it's, I'm a football man, so it's the football story that got me the most. So for people that don't know, can you explain that for us, please? <laughs> no, oh, what's what happened? Even, do you even need to explain the, the, the training story first? Or could we go wait, 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 wait. Which, which one? The one of you being Googled. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, the, the, you know what? It's mad because anytime I say the story, people don't actually believe it happened, but it was on my very first day. So yeah. On the very, on the very first day of joining the police, right? Everybody, we were in like a training class of 24 people, and everybody was just going around telling people what they did, what they used to do. And it came to me, and obviously, my prof like what I did, my profession was playing football. So I told him I used to play for Sheffield United, and, and the, I could see the train was like, oh, oh, oh. like, oh, you used to play football, this, like that. So the next day, um, I came into work, and then I got called straight into the sergeant's office. And the sergeant sat me down, and he was like, oh, the trainer basically made me aware you used to play football, so we decided to Google you. So they Googled my name, and unfortunately at the time, Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, no, wait. I, didn't, I couldn't hear you. What did you say, sorry? I don't know if everyone else... Can you hear me now? You said, um, yeah, you said, unfortunately, at the time, and then that's when I went. I'm not sure about people watching. Oh, okay. Well, one second. I think it's because my battery's battery. Oh, I need to get charged. In two seconds. No worries. By the way, guys, the blending stopped. But it's making me a bit hungry now. <laughs> We can't hear. Don't worry. We reckon this is battery's about to die, so we're going to sort that out with that. Oh, now's a good time. Actually, if you have any questions, ask your questions in the question box. So if you see where everyone's commenting, next to it, there's a box with a question mark. Ask any questions you have. I'm going to be asking that later on. Is that the charger? Yeah, sorry, bro. No problem at all, man. Oh, I hope the phone hasn't died. I've seen the signal. Yeah, when the battery dies, low phone. I'm seeing the circle thing. Oh, okay. I thought the phone died. But I, see, I see the circle thing go around like the loaded thing. No, no, no. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I just put the charger in. I'll, I'll just hold it for a second. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, um, cool. What was I even up to? Yeah, so I got called into the sergeant's office, office right? Yeah. And they Googled my name and uh, Michael Barton came up. And unfortunately, he was arrested for match fixing. So the sergeant said, oh, um, well, we Googled you and we think that that's you. So I said, how can that be me? Because I'm like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. The guy's in prison. <laughs> the guy's in prison, number one, and he doesn't look anything like me. So I, as soon as I said that, they pulled up a picture of the Michael Boateng and they put it up on the screen. And they made me stand next to the screen. And the sergeant looked at a picture of the guy and he looked at me and he's like, I think that that's you. So I was like, are you be uh, in my head? I'm thinking, are you being serious? Like you, you're looking at a picture of a random black guy. Yeah, that, and you're you looking think it was, at me. You actually generally think it was a joke. No, nah, at first I thought he was. At first I thought he was playing, but then I looked at the sergeant and he had like his face was like dead serious. So he had like a proper serious straight look on his face. Mm. So I was like, oh my god, like this is really happening. So I, I, I switched up and I was like, how can you look at a picture of a random black guy on the screen and look at me? and assume that we're the same person because we have the same name that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. So because he saw that I was getting a bit angry, he called um, another sergeant. So there's two sergeants in the room now and they both sat down and they looked at a picture. And again, they, they said they were like, stand up next to the screen, like I'm some kind of circus monkey. So they, mm -hmm. I, I stood up next to the screen, they're looking at the screen, they think, oh, they go, yeah, yeah, it looks like you, we think that that's you. So I had to bring in my, um, I had to bring in my passport to verify the next day that that wasn't me. But the, um, the whole mockery of the whole thing is, obviously, to join the police force, you have to be vetted. Like, you're yeah. extensively vetted to join the police. So it's one of them ones, they knew it wasn't me. Like, you have to know it's not me, but somehow, some way, that was allowed to happen. And it was just, the whole situation was just mad, to be honest. That's crazy. So talk to me, Mike. Hold on. Can you put your phone down a bit? Because the comments are covering your face. Yeah, there oh, we go. So, that yeah, that's better. In response to that, yeah... If this is what's mm. happening on the inside, what hope do we have here on the outside in terms of dismantling systemic racism and like race relations between black people and the police and stuff like that? Do you have like how how is that gonna change, if that makes sense? For me, the where the change comes is from the idea of just Understand, it's like understanding the communities that you serve, really. Yeah. If, you, if you are sworn to protect and serve a certain community but don't understand their cultures 
and understand how they maneuver and understand how they work, then that alone you're never really gonna you're never really gonna get them as a people. So mm. for me, an easy way to kind of bridge that barrier is to obviously recruit and employ people from those communities. So if you've mm. got black people who live in a certain area, you've got black officers from that area in the force, then they can go and police the communities with love and understanding rather than just harshness and, and the typical what we've seen pretty much throughout the past couple of weeks of all these mad videos coming up. So I, I honestly think it comes down to recruitment for a start. That's, that's got to be one that somebody's got to look at and think it needs to change, basically. It needs to change. Mm -hmm. Okay, so more sort of representation. And in, in your time in the force, how many black seniors did you have or did you interact with? Um, I interacted with two. And I'll be real, one of them I never really saw a lot. And I think yeah. the, the, the one of them was a black female. She was mm -hmm. a chief inspector and she was the highest rank black officer or black female in the whole entire force. In the whole force? In so the whole that, force. That's like the Manchester police, right? Yeah, that was um, Great okay. Manchester police. So she was like, obviously, black female, highest ranking black female officer in the whole force. And I'm thinking chief inspector, that's poor. Because there's a lot more stages to go, but it's... it's... Yeah, well, uh, break down the stages for people who don't know, actually. Okay, so you have a PC. You have, that's like a regular base level. Then you have a sergeant, then you have an inspector, chief inspector, superintendent, chief superintendent, then assistant chief constable, and then chief constable. And then oh, if you're wow. in London... There's a lot of levels. There's a lot of levels. Yeah, yeah. And then if you're in London, you then have the police commissioner as well. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. There's a lot of level. That's very interesting. Like even me personally, I don't know much about the police. You know what I mean? Mm. Other than the videos and images that we see. How do you feel about the Black Lives Matters protests and everything that's going on? Because I know you released a powerful video as well. Where did yeah. that what where did that video come from from within you? Like the video came what led the video to? came from um the police in general just hassling me. And even after Love Island, they were still kind of getting on to me. And my breaking point was the morning that I released the video, my mum sent me a text saying, oh, the police have sent you a letter. So I said, print screen it and send it to me. So she sent me the letter. And the letter that the police had sent was basically saying that I owe them money. Huh? So I, I got to pay them. But yeah. the, weird thing, the weird thing was, I'm thinking, a whole police force, how can I owe you money? And then secondly... <laughs> You, they, they didn't. They didn't pay me my last month's pay before I, before I went into Love Island. So you guys yeah. already owe me, and I'm thinking like I don't play with my money. Do you understand? Like, I've worked for that. Not even yeah. just work, but some of the situations that we have to deal with at work as well. It's like one of them ones where they're genuinely life threatening. So I put mm. my life in harm's way for you guys to not even give me my money just because I'm going onto TV. So that, anyway, they sent me a letter saying that I owe them money. The money that I owed them apparently was eighty pounds and and sixty two pence or something. Like, something stupid. But so what, honestly, what? it didn't even the, the letter didn't even specify what for. They just said I owed them money. No way. Yeah. It, I, honestly, I can't even make this up. So they said I owed them money. So at that point, I'm thinking after everything that I've been through this past three years, and even having to come out of Love Island and see all of these nonsense stories which you guys have refused to even back me because the matter of the fact is every single story that came out in the press from when I was in Love Island to when I came out, they were all false and the police mm. knew that. The police knew that and they didn't back me at all. They, they released a blanket statement saying, yes, there was an investigation about this officer. However, the matter is still being dealt with, la, la, la. I yeah. had my hearing and every single one of them, every single one of them investigations got dropped because they knew that I was innocent. But and they didn't that, Did that get reported? Did the, that didn't get reported. It didn't get or, reported. Or the only thing they reported is that I missed a day of work, which I admittedly opened to missing a day of work. But the reason why I missed a day of work is because of the stress that I was under at the time because they were yeah. constantly investigating me. So it was like, I told them that I'm not coming into work. So it's all mad, but... I was so I was so down that morning and seeing that letter. So, I mean, I'm I'm always someone that's been into my spoken word, yeah. and it was the only way that I could, at that point, just even remotely get my thoughts across without 
without just breaking down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I literally got a pen and paper. I started writing it down. And then as soon as I wrote it down, I said it to Chris. And the first time I said it, I said the poem, I couldn't even get it out. I ended up crying. So that's why when I when I done the video next, my eyes were a bit red because I I, I already just I, I was fed up. I had enough. Couldn't do it no more. Mm. But so I just felt like it was just me. It was a way for people to see the real me and for people to see the pain that I'm genuinely in and that I've genuinely genuinely been feeling and what they put me through basically. Mm. So that that was basically the whole story behind me putting out that video. It's crazy. You even I never knew about the um, money thing. I never knew about you owing money. Like, how can you owe money to the police? It doesn't make sense. A whole force owing them money. Since when have you heard anybody having to owe money to your employer? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So, on the rules then, yeah, as Michael Barton, Mike Barton, a black man in the UK, how do you feel black people are treated by those in authority if that makes sense like if you could sum up for people why there's outrage now how would you sum that because a lot of people i've seen come with a counter argument of like oh george floyd happened in america RFP. that's an american problem there's no issue here in the uk mm. from your perspective in the different spaces you've been how would you dissect that from my perspective and you know what i hear a lot of people talking about how oh, it's not as bad as it is in the, in, in the UK as it is in America. But the fact is, if police officers had guns in the UK, it would be 10 times worse, number one. Mm. Number two, to be a black person in the UK is, to, it is it's so crazy. It's basically to, to, for me to go in the shop and be scared of coming out about buying something. That's what mm. it means to be black in the UK. Though these kind of things that white people never have to worry about, these are the kind of things that we have to worry about on a daily basis, stuff that they will never even comprehend that's on our mind. The one time I've ever felt f like fully free in my life is when I went to Ghana 12 years ago. And I, I, that's the first time I've been. I've not even been to Ghana in my life, but all of a sudden I'm in a new country and I feel free. Feel, yeah. but I'm, in my ho I'm, I'm in my home in England. I was born and raised here, but I've never felt free. So mm. that's what it means to be black for me in the UK. And it, it's mad that that's how, that's how it is. And I don't have all the answers. I pray to God that things yeah. will change slowly but surely. And, I, and you know, the Black Lives Matter movement is, is strong. And I pray that it's not just a, a trend and it's something that, that ends and then, and then street gangs go back to killing each other and then everything's all forgotten about. I hope it's something that actually people learn from and get yeah. educated and, and man them on blocks from top to bottom can look at each other and think, you know what, we need to stop killing it. We need to stop killing ourselves. We need to stop killing someone because of a postcode. I need to stop looking at another black man and be envious because he's somewhere and I'm not. But from our point of view as a community, to lift us up, number one, and then number two, for everybody else just to realise that we're not anything else apart from human. Don't yeah. look at me differently because of the colour of my skin. Look at me because of the content of my character and what I can do as a person. And, mm -hmm. that, and, then, I, and then hopefully we can start to see real change. I hear you. And that's, that's what it comes down to. Like, I always say, I always say, even on the live, I don't want special treatment. Like, I don't want to fit a quota for diversity or whatever. I don't want that. I just want to be treated normally, like how everybody else gets treated, you know? And the fact that we have to beg and protest and march for that, is a real problem, but I feel a lot of people this time round from outside of that community have participated. Do you think it's because of the shock that they saw, or do you think it's times have changed? Like, why are other people getting involved so much now? I feel like I think it's a bit of both. I think it's like the, the it's a, it's like a social media world now. Mm -hmm. Everything kind of interlinks on social media, so the more people do something the more it becomes a little bit of a trend. So I feel like it's sad to say it is a bit of a trendy thing to be on the Black Lives Matter thing, mm -hmm. which again, it shouldn't be. It should just be because you want to do it because that's on your heart. But at the same time as well, I feel like people are genuinely now just fed up. And because it's now, because we live in, a, in a, an era where everything's recorded and people can can see it happening live, people are genuinely shocked. Mm. But, what I'd even say to those people is it's not a case of now 
um, racism is getting worse. It's always been like this. It's just now that it's been it's being recorded. Ooh, that's yeah, the only it's being shared on mass. It's being shared. That's that's the only difference. Not it's not increased. It's not decreased. It's always been like this. Mm. And now we're recording it, and now people's eyes are finally being opened to to the madness that's going on. Yeah, and I hope, as as you said, like I do hope and pray we can actually see long lasting change. And I guess we're all doing our part as well. Even you sharing your experiences like that, mm. you gotta be brave to not fear no backlash, especially like the press. Like they were onto you, the press. How did you yeah. feel about that side of things? Even for your family, I remember I think your family did a statement on your behalf whilst you was inside, yeah. and I was thinking, oh, the poor family, like. How did you guys all feel about that? No, it's mad because we, honestly, before I even went into the villa, we sat down as a family, we discussed it, we prayed about it because we knew that it was going to come. Mm. Inevitably, a black man that's doing his thing on TV, the media are going to eat that up, they're going to try to bring me down. And because they had ammo to try and bring me down, we knew they were going to use it. But the thing is, where I was kind of disappointed is that the reason, one of the things that helped me to even go on Love, Love Island is because I knew that all of these stories that they could potentially bring up were fake. So my mm -hmm. one thing was hoping that the police would kind of help me out in that sense by basically yeah, shutting yeah. everything down, which they didn't. So I'm grateful I'm grateful that I had my family around to kind of back me while I yeah. couldn't see what was going on. And yeah, man, just, just being in that position alone was just crazy to be honest. Yeah, I know. But don't worry, you're, you're winning now. So you're out of the villa. What do we call you? Influenza? Is that what we call you? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, I suppose. I suppose, yeah. But that, 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 that phrase just sounds a bit weird to me, though. Influenza. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit but weird. It, but even on that, so what does life look like now? Like, what happens after Love Island? We haven't even so, got to Miss Priscilla yet. But just for you, Michael Brand, what happens? Yeah. So, you know what? Funny enough, um, I'm close to announcing... Well, I already announced that I was going back into football. I just wow. haven't announced... I, ha I haven't announced the club. So, probably within the next two weeks, I'll be announcing what club I'm going to. So, okay. that's, just one, that's just one thing that I'm looking to get into. Um, and then, yeah, there's, there's other stuff as well that I've been, I've been looking at. So, you know, God willing... All being well, slowly but surely over the next couple of weeks, you guys will see what I'm getting into. More. Have you enjoyed the lifestyle after the villa? Like, is it I have. Like, crazy experiences that like, the media, I've even seen you've done interviews on my stage and radio and all of that. How's yeah, that yeah. been? It's been cool. It's, it's all been new to me, innit? Like, I, I didn't know what it would be like, but I've kind of enjoyed it because obviously you're in the limelight a little bit. I'll be lying if I said I wasn't. Yeah. And just people, <laughs> like, Going to Asda and and people knowing me and coming up to me, it's, it's weird, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm just trying to get used to it. That's sick, man. And so are you, all of your family creative or like media sort of sway? Because I know your brother was on TV, your other brother yeah. acts, I believe. Yeah. And then your sisters, are they creative as well? Like, does it run in the family, basically? So obviously being, being my dad's a pastor, isn't it? So yeah. my dad always like, he always wanted us to, to do something in the church so okay. in the church we all started off like just singing dancing all that kind yeah. of stuff so naturally i think we're all creative i think as we got older i'm the one that really kind of took that and ran with it <laughs> so, <laughs> sort of thing. and and so did my other brothers as well my sisters they they became a bit more reserved they're, they're nurses now okay but, yeah so they could they became a bit more reserved but yeah i say naturally we're all creative people I think that's a book title, you know, Pastor's Child to Love Island. You might have to write a book. <laughs> What's life like as a pastor's child then? Right. It, was all, it was all right. And you know what? My dad, fair play to him, yeah. He, he could have been strict on us because I was yeah. a bad, I was a bad you. I was, was, was he? I was a bad child, I can't lie. But he, his, his kind of method on raising us was you can't be too tough. You have to let them learn on their own and then, okay. and then you just guide them along the way. So I, I respect him for that. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So is that church every Sunday? Most, most, most Sundays, because I was playing football as you well. Play so. football. Yeah, yeah, how did you do that? How did you start playing football? I remember there was one I, time I had, to, I, had to, I had to beg. Yeah. I had to beg. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get, because unless... Unless parents, I, I, I don't know, unless African parents, I don't know, maybe it's just mine. Let me not speak yeah. about African parents. 
but unless my mom and dad see tangible income coming, there's no yeah. way. <laughs> no way. They will let me do it. You get me? So my dad wanted to see that there was dollar signs before he would ever let me do football properly. So until they start, until I started getting paid for it, he was like, this one, you can't do it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I asked Shea, bro, just before you jumped on the live, yeah, how do you feel about cancel culture? Because obviously the boy, I think Callum from Love Island's come out, he's done his sort of statement and stuff in terms of the comments that came out in his past. Oh, Connor. Think, Connor. Is it Connor? Is it Connor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connor, Connor. Connor, Connor. Is there room for grace with things like this? And how no. do you measure that? The difficult thing with Connor and um, just people in general who, who decide to come out after they've been caught being racist, and I'll call it being caught because mm -hmm. the matter of the fact is if his girlfriend had never come out with that, nobody would have known that that happened. Yeah. So for me, it all comes down to your sincerity and your heart. With Connor, I feel like he's had near enough like five, six months to come out with the statement that he did. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And whilst we were in the villa as well, me and him were very cool. As soon as I came out and I found out what I'd said, I distanced myself straight away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, with Grace, it's like, unless I see that sincerity and that genuineness, I'm, I'm personally not going to allow you that grace because I don't think, I don't think it's genuine. I don't think okay. it's sincere. You've had six months to open up about your, your, your racism, your outright racism as well. You can see you've literally said nothing. And then mm -hmm. to, add, to add insult to injury, injury, you've then gone and posted a black box and turned off your comments. It's a bit, it's a bit, mm -hmm. it's a that. bit weird. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit weird. So it's almost like you've been pressured into to, to a point where you've got no return. You have to then release a statement. So in certain circumstances, I believe grace should always be there. But for me personally, I'm always looking at a person's heart. Yeah. And seeing, seeing if I think you're genuine. If I think you're genuine and, and you want to change and, and you feel like there is room for learning and you've genuinely learned from what you've done and you're moving forward now, fair play. Go do your thing in it. But with that particular instance, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just don't see it. That's it. Fair play, man. Guys, sorry, I told you about the tomatoes before. I think the onions are now coming to my room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I, I listen, after this, I don't know what regulations are saying, but if you're going to leave me some gelato at the front door. Okay, yeah. say no more, say no more. Yeah. I can yeah. okay, thank you, <laughs> so we haven't spoken about Miss Priscilla. Okay, you you're by the way. She's in my bad books. Let me just say that now. Yeah, so, what's going on? A lot of a lot of her people then have messaged like a lot of her fans. I don't know. They've been messaging me. Yeah, they've been messaging me to ask as well. I'm not speaking to her. She's in trouble. She, she, she's in trouble. <laughs> so you, you can't tell us what she's done. I can't tell you. No, Priscilla Slander. Thank you. Can you leave the line, please? <laughs> Can you leave? I'm not talking to you right now. Let me go close the door. This girl's been trying to speak to me all day. I'm not having it. I'm not talking to her. She what knows what she's. Be... What could be so bad? Uh, hey, Chris! Yeah. Am I allowed to say? You can say it in code. Okay. <laughs> I want to give Chris the chance to speak as well, you know. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, so... How do I put this? Uh, man, all right, cool. So, as a man... Yes. No, 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 let me talk. <laughs> let me talk. Let me talk. Let me talk. Okay? Let me talk. As a man, you know, we are very generous. Yes. Yes. So when our, when our women, they need something, we're there to provide. 100%. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So man comes from a hard day at the office. Mm-hmm. I just need to release. Mm-hmm. And then my baby said no. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> my chest and this is I'm what's getting hurt. you huh this is what's getting you she didn't give me I'm my, uh. I don't even know if I can give it to you you have to see why you have to know the reasons why there was no reason she's not she's not tired she didn't do nothing <laughs> she was looking good like I didn't get it I didn't get it I just don't get it and even now there's no real, real reason explanation as to why 
But yeah, that's that's why I'm not talking to Chris. That's why you're not talking to her. I bet by the time we finish talking, yeah, me and you, you're gonna be talking to her. Because I wanted to know what attracted you to Priscilla first. <laughs> what attracted now, you to her? What attracted me is just that she's a she ah uh, now I've got to pick her up when I'm angry with her. What are you doing? <laughs> But yeah, now Chris is cool, man. She just she's she's like a um an understanding, very down to earth character. So you can speak to her on any level and she'll just get you. Yeah. And she's very personable as well. And I like I like to see my partner integrating easily with people. That just she's like that's everything I've wanted in a in a female. So Okay. And then obviously she she's beautiful as well, so it's like win win. Uh, <laughs> win win. I was I was in and out of the um Love Island season because basically I'm on air during the time it's on TV. So right. I was like, in and out, in and out. But what was, like, your story in the villa? What that? Like, what did you see? What was your first interactions? Uh, okay, so, my obviously, my story in the villa started with a, a, a young lady called Leanne. Yeah. <laughs> we um, obviously starting to speak to her. It was like, we were just getting to know each other kind of thing. Just seeing how it goes. Um, slowly but surely, I think we realised, uh, like, a bit down the line, I think, I'd say, like, a week uh, and a half that we weren't really mashing as well. Yeah. So, obviously, unbeknown to me, she was making that known to other people. Yeah. As for me, I, I'm kind of, I like to keep my business within me and you. I don't really like to spread my business like that. Yeah. So, I, if I had an issue, I'd tell her. If she had an issue, she'd tell somebody else. So it got to a point where we, I was just like, we just got to come to like a decision. What is this? Are we breaking up or are we doing something? And then obviously mm -hmm. she ended up calling me and um, yeah, just telling me the whole thing will lock up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as a man, you just have to accept it and run with it, which I did gracefully as well. And then um, the producers at the time, obviously, I had said I wasn't going to speak to nobody, but the powers that be, they have a TV, they have a TV show to run in it. So, yeah. <laughs> they, in a nutshell, they basically asked me who who I would move to next. And I said, the only person who kind of makes sense right now is, is Jess, really, because me and her, we get on. I already said she looks good. Like, everybody knows that me and her talk all the time. So it was a thing whereby it just made sense, didn't it? It yeah, just made yeah, sense. Yeah. So I ended up getting with Jess, and then um, what even happened after? What even happened after that? Oh yeah, Castle and Moore. Cause, yeah, uh, Jess, yeah, Jess, Jess was. Oh, yeah, I had a little saga with Lukey boy. Yeah, had to kind of <laughs> fight a little bit. <laughs> but you know what? Can I just say, with that situation, yeah, yeah, it was a bit. Watching it back on TV, I understand why people looked at me as a villain. Because okay, it looked like okay. I was just being a bit wrecky and taking yeah. my dad. But that's not, even, <laughs> that's not even how it was. Me and Luke, yeah, we had like serious, like man to man deep conversations. Like, listen, I don't want to. I said to him, I don't want to intrude. I know you and Jess are working on something. So, yeah, I'll come in where I feel like I can, but yeah. I, won't, I won't do too much. Okay. But looking at what I saw on TV, it made it look like I was always just. just Sure. Okay, okay. Just yeah, doing yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> doing this. <laughs> I was like, ah. That's not even what it was like. But then um, Jess pretty much made it clear that if she had to pick between me and Luke, based off character-wise, she was always going to pick me because me and her just got on more. Okay. And I think I think that was evident in the villa. Like, that was known. So it wasn't actually a surprise to me when she picked me just because of that. Mm. So then, after that, we never really had time to even progress anything because Casa and Moore came straight away. Yeah, okay. And then, obviously, Casa came and Priscilla came, and yeah. uh, their the chocolates just overwhelmed me. That's very man. The Hershey's chocolate just took over from there. <laughs> it was just, honestly, uh, the, the time that me and Priscilla had in Casa. I just wish that they had caught everything because me and her, we got on so much that we were always together. Even there was times where we come out matching, we didn't even realize we were doing it. it was oh, just nice. yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, man, we just clicked. And then from there, she came back to the villa and it, it was just me and Chris all the way. Nice one. And then how has life been post villa? Because first of all, you know, there's just mad media engagement. Like, how do you have a normal relationship 
in this rush of mainstream media. Um, and because like, relationships are serious, isn't it? They need time, they need growth, and you don't yeah. want to be like performative for the public sort of thing. So how have you guys done that? So we had a conversation, first of all, when we came out of the middle, and we were just like, listen, is it going to be for sure? Is it going to be real? And then I think we, so we basically gave each other till the end of the month to, yeah. uh, <laughs> to, to uh, our, let me say, sort out all of our affairs, isn't it? <laughs> and then, yeah. <laughs> and then at the end of that month, we, we were going to decide whether we were going to try with the relationship or whether we were just going to like, be a thing for the camera yeah. or if we were just going to lock it off completely. And I think after, it was even that time period that I realised, you know what, I'm actually really liking this girl. That is nice. So, and she, luckily, she was feeling the same way as well. So we ended up kind of getting closer and closer. And then quarantine happened. And as it happened, oh, when so quarantine awesome, came... Yeah. You there? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, so I'm back. Okay, cool. went, I didn't hear what you said. You ended up... As, as quarantine came, I was already in the house. So we were basically locked in the house together. Oh no, my signal's doing a madness. Sorry. As quarantine came, you. So as quarantine came, we were locked in the house together. So then we were just stuck together. Yeah, and that's that's a one of two way situation. Yeah. We're gonna love each other. Or we're gonna hate each other. <laughs> yeah. So that was make or break, and luckily it, yeah. made, it made us. So yeah. That's nice. Right. 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 Last last one on Chris. What do you love about Priscilla that the world doesn't know about her? Uh, she's um, she's more. Uh, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, see, I don't know if I can say it, but then I don't wanna. There's a side to her that nobody's been able to see yet. Okay. And without kind of putting her in the in the limelight, because I don't like to do that. I'd rather her come out and tell people what she'd like herself, but. There's a side to her that people haven't seen yet and it's really sweet and there's a real soft side. And I feel like when time comes and opportunities arise, she'll be able to show the world that. But I really love that side of her. Wonderful, man. Wonderful. I want to get into questions from the fans. There's a lot of questions. People have sent me some from before. Okay. Let me see what we can get into here. Um, let's see you've said about your experience do you still talk to people from love island yes i talk to a few people i talk to like chad um jordan biggs now and then naz recently so yeah i talk to a few people yeah yeah someone said are you still in the police no hold on what did you say sorry i think you cut out for me Oh, no, nah, I've left the police. We're, we're done with that now. Okay, you're done with that. A question I got from before is, do you plan to get married? I hope so. <laughs> At some <laughs> point down the line. You know what? It's funny because recently, uh, I think we ended up on Shade Bar because I gave her a date of when me and Priscilla were going to get married. It was a joke. And people, no. took it, <laughs> people took it and ran with it somewhere. But... Eventually, yeah, man, we'd like to get married. That would be nice. Okay, okay. How do you deal with the ignorance of people? How do I deal with it? I can I, I just behave in a dignified way. I feel like when people are stupid and they act dumb and they see you and you, you're just coming correct, it even it pisses them off even more. So I just I just act the same way and educate them where I can. Okay. Someone said, would you say you are happy in life right now? Oh, wow. um, yes, I, I would say I'm happy in life right now, but I, at the same time as well, I say I'm not comfortable in okay. the least. I'm definitely not comfortable. There's, there's so much that I want to achieve by December, midnight. Mm -hmm. when, I, when, I, <laughs> when I hear that um, Happy New Year, I, I need to have achieved a lot mm -hmm. more than, than I've got right now. So I, I, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm not comfortable. Someone said on the questions before, what motivates you then? Motivates me. Um, just wanting, wanting to achieve all of my goals and all my aspirations in life. And even though that's like very like, tasky, it seems very big, 
I know that if you put effort into it, and I know if I put effort into it, then I don't think there's anything that I can't get close to achieving or I can't achieve. Okay. What is your favourite song at the moment? Uh, Iabo, um, Guilty Beats. Yeah. Yeah, that's my that's my song right now. That's your jam right now. Yeah. All right. Do you have any plans to go Ghana soon? Or like when we can fly again? Would you like to go I'm planning to go Ghana in December and spending the New Year's there. Yeah, okay. So God yeah. willing, all flights and stuff are open. All flights, God willing, everything open, then I'll be in Ghana in December. Yeah. What would you say to your young self? My young self, um, just keep working hard, man, and, yeah. and don't be lazy. Mm. <laughs> don't, don't honestly uh, it's, it sounds funny but laziness can be the biggest killer to people okay and, and just falling into that trap of not not working hard so i'd say to my younger self just always work hard all right let's see this is a cool one what are your overall thoughts of love island my overall thoughts are it's a it's a it's a beautiful experience but it, it's an experience where if you're not mentally ready for it can potentially kill you so, mm. so like, um, yeah. If you're if you're looking to go on Love Island, always have a reason why you're looking to do it, and then follow up on that reason. Okay, we've got a few more. What would you like to see improved on the next season of Love Island? Some of them. Um, improve. I would. It's hard because what I'd like to see improve is for kind of the powers that be to have to allow the contestants to have more of a free role, so to speak, to basically just live a bit more rather than okay. certain directions being given. Um, and yeah, and for more stuff to be shown, it's, it's hard because they have to cram everything into an hour. Yeah. But it's like, there's a lot that goes on that would really help to the public really understand it and emphasise with certain characters more. So if they could find a way to show more, then that would be good. See, What advice would you give to people struggling with self-esteem? Oh, My advice um, to people struggling is to love yourself, man, honestly, and, and be happy and be blessed that you're here and you're here for a reason. I used to hate myself. I used to hate my lips. I used to hate my really? teeth. I used to hate my ears. My hairline, I felt like it was disproportionate. Like, it was mad. And, and it got to a point where I just realised, you know what? I'm never going to change into anyone else. I'm never going to be anyone else. Like, this is the body that God has given me. All of my abilities, this is what I've been given. So I have to make it work. So once I realised that, then I started to love myself a bit more and started to be a bit more confident. And then from there, that's when you can literally do whatever you want. How did you get to that process? Like, what was the turning point that made you realise that? Is there ever, was there, like, a concrete this happened in my life or was it a gradual thing because as you got older? It, it was a gradual thing but then it was when I joined Sheffield United and I realised that there are people who had been in that academy from like when they were five and that were trying to get in and I had even missed the mark so I couldn't even join the academy. I had to join as a third year scholar. Mm. And when I joined at that point and I realised you know what bro, I can actually accomplish things without looking like David Beckham without looking like Idris Alba mm. like and you can still achieve these things. And I was like, you know what? If this is me, then I'm happy with being me. And then from there, yeah. that's when I, I really started to pick up on my confidence. That's nice, man. What was your experience behind the scenes on Love Island, whilst you were on the show? Because, like, obviously, the powers that be, you guys are in communication and stuff. Yeah. How constructed is it, if that makes sense? Um, it was, at first, it was um, a lot to deal with because obviously none of us have been in that environment so they were very hands-on yeah with us guys and and help guiding us along the way what to do and what to what kind of what to say so to speak yes. um i'm trying not to get in trouble because <laughs> you, yeah. you know if you say too much too much yeah <laughs> don't say too much yeah they've come for you but yeah but um behind the scenes it was cool Behind the scene was cool. And eventually you just get used to it. So it's like almost from start to finish, they have more of an influence, but then as the show goes on, they kind of relinquish their their hold, so to speak. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Favourite part of lockdown? 
favorite part of lockdown. But that fa the favorite part of lockdown, I can't really tell you. That. <laughs> <laughs> but you're laughing, so I guess you know what it is. <laughs> I'm along the lines. All right, let me find one last one. One last one. Hold on. Two, actually. Someone said, did you ever arrest anyone? Did I ever arrest anyone? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> quite a few people. Okay. Let me see. There's Some people have typed a lot of stuff that I can't see. Some people are spamming me. Okay, I will go with this one, actually. Do you have any regrets after coming out of Love Island? Um, yes, I do. The one thing that I regret is um, the whole... I, I don't know how much of it was seen because even watch, wanting, to, wanting to watch it back in my heart just makes me cringe. So mm -hmm. I'm like... But the whole... There was a little Sophie situation that was never me. Like, if, okay. I'm, if I'm point blank clear, being honest, I never ever wanted to move to Sophie. It was never a thing. Yeah. But... Based on the powers that be and the conversation that we had, I had to have that conversation. So it was like, it was it was unnecessary part of my story. Okay. Makes so that's, the, that's probably the one thing I regret because up until then, me and Sophie's relationship was just friends. Like, it was, and that's what it was. So it was like, it was just weird. But sometimes you got, and the twerking as well. I wish I had never, <laughs> ever, I wish I had They're never, ever, 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 ever done that in my life. I can't believe. I cannot believe. <laughs> <laughs> People, I don't think you ever lived that down. They're on to you. Listen, the man them are still getting on to me today and they won't let me forget. Yeah. They won't <laughs> let me forget. Thank you so much for your time this evening, bro, man. Oh, Honestly, thanks for having thanks me, man. for representing as well. You've dropped a lot of wisdom, a lot of gems. Any last words of advice just for life in general? Um, oh, man. I don't know. Like, I put you on the spot, <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, put me on the spot. But no, I, I'd honestly just say, like, if you've got goals and aspirations, honestly, you can literally, life can take you from zero to 100 in a matter of, like, days. So keep pushing for your dreams and keep working hard and, and something will definitely come up. Wicked. Thank you very much. Guys, drop your clap emojis in the comments. Mr. Mike Mike here, Love Island Live and Direct. Very excited to see what you do next. Have you announced the have you announced the club? No, nah, not yet, but yep. if you DM me, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right, cool. Say no more. Say no more. Thank you so much, bro, man. No worries. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, shout, no problem. See you. Bye bye. Take care. Mobo Lowdown and Lockdown again Friday nights. We bring you two interviews with people that you want to be hearing from, man. Today was actually really inspiring, getting the sort of knowledge from both Shavo and Mike, Mr. Mike Barton as well. Different stories, but a lot of insight. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Hey, everyone that comes every week, I love you. My heart goes out to you right now, honestly. Thank you very much. Real Versa, I see you. Drop your emojis in the comments. We will be back next Friday. And what I want you to do is actually... DM me or DM Mobo. Who do you want us to speak to? Because this show is all about you guys, man. Who do you want us to speak to? Who do you want me to interview? If there's people we haven't covered yet, any, think about anyone. Doesn't have to be musicians, actors, anything. Even if it's your next door neighbor. If your next door neighbor's got a story, let me know and we can sort it out, man. But yeah, guys, thank you very much. Check this out on YouTube as well. Make sure you head to the Mobo Instagram and see United We Stand and listen to Kanye. What read Kanye's open letter? to the Secretary of State for Digital Media, Sport and Culture. I think I've got that right. But you can see all the links in our bios too. But have a good evening. I'm about to go watch Man United win. See you guys later. <laughs>